Hey guys, it's Gary Vay, Nerdchuck, and this is the Gary V Audio Experience. Linda Cohn in for the doggy here on Mad Dog Unleashed. I'm not going to waste any time because my next guest could be the greatest guest I've ever had on Mad Dog Unleashed. In fact, it is. Gary Vaynerchuk at Gary V. Uh, he joins me now. I could read your resume, which I plan to, Gary, but you know what? I'm just so excited. I just want to get you on the radio. Hi, Gary. Hey, Linda. How are you? I'm doing great. Would you mind if you just stood by while I read all your things right now? I'm going to do it. I'm not even going to ask you to say anything. Entrepreneur, four-time New York Times bestselling author. Amazing. I mean, investor, inspirational speaker. We know about he's a sports fanatic. See his amazing videos on YouTube. It's incredible. I mean, I could go on and on, but I know this. Your middle name is J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. You are the biggest Jets fan I know. And you join me now. And anyway, thanks for a few minutes. Uh, let's start there, okay? Um, I'm not underestimating your love and your passion for the Jets. Where where did that come from? You know, uh, it came from Eric Godfrey, 1982, playground outside. I was just, uh, I was an immigrant from Russia. It, they, the kids outside asked me who, who I like. I go, I have no idea. I'm not even sure I understood what they were saying. They said, you're a Jets fan. I started watching and I've never stopped. That was the 82 season, Linda. We went to the AFC Championship game. I thought that's how it was going to roll. If you told me it was going to be 16 more years before I got back to that spot, I might have I might have changed my mind, but I'm a diehard. Listen, I'm one of the few Jet fans running around right now ecstatic. All these people complaining on Twitter, Jets forums. I'm thrilled. I want to go 0-16. I want Josh to teach Hasselbeck or, or you know, the Hackenberg, excuse me, or, or teach uh, Watson or whatever we right. do here. I want, to, I want to be terrible. We have a big NF. We have a huge, huge quarterback class coming out the following year. Right? The kid from USC and, and all these – and Rosen from UCLA, the Wyoming kid. So – I don't think the Jets have been sitting better in a long, long time than right now. And I know that's opposite from a lot of people's point of view. And I'm thrilled because I like being on the opposite side of most people's point of view. It's interesting. And by the way, uh, uh, most Jet fans, there are a lot of Jet fans that would love to. The word is tank. Tank the season, go 0-16, look for the future. Because as this team looks now, although there was breaking news right before you came on, the Jets did sign defensive lineman Mike Hennel from the Green Bay Packers, who actually has some skill. So that might, you know, deter from the 0-16 mark. But, you know, Gary, there's so much more to you than the Jets. You're a sports fanatic. But it's interesting because when we've had conversations, while your loyalty for other teams when you were a child kind of like faded off, the Jets, you've stayed true to them. Why is that? What separates them from the other teams? Well, you know, we had dinner the other night, and what excited me was I got to drop some serious Rangers knowledge on you, and you were surprised because I never talk about it. That's because that fateful night, and I was there game seven in the Garden, when they won, that was it for me. Right. Charlie Hayes, two years later, catches a ball on the third baseline, and that was it for me with the Yanks, too. Linda, I'm a, I'm a guy who loves the climb, and when my teams win championships, something happens. The, you know, they turn into a pumpkin. And so now it's Jets mix. I'm super focused. You know, secretly, secretly, I wish, in a weird way, I wish I was an Islanders fan, like my friend Scott Hunter, Mike Playa, the only two I know, you know, because they still haven't won. They still haven't won. And I like the chase. I'm a chase guy more than, I don't want to be one of these people that wraps his self-esteem into the teams that I root for, right? Like the only pe- reason I feel good about myself is because I'm a Patriots fan, you know, like yeah. like all those loser Boston friends I have. So I, uh, you know, that's how I roll. Talking with Gary Vaynerchuk, at Gary V, at VaynerMedia. You, you know him, just go on social media. He's everything. His books are amazing. Four-time New York Times bestselling author. You know, for you, Gary, it began with wine at the age of 14. For our listeners who don't know... Can you fill them in? My dad saved every penny as an immigrant, bought a small liquor store in Springfield, New Jersey, dragged me in when I was 14, oldest son immigrant, you know. Talking with Gary Vaynerchuk, of course, at Gary V. Got to follow him. He's got over a million followers, and that's just in one platform. Linda Cohn in for Christopher Mad Dog Russo. This is Mad Dog Unleashed. Um, so many things I want to get to here. Uh, we talked about, yeah, the Antonio Brown Facebook Live. It got him into trouble. We'll see uh, where that goes and all. But, uh, you know, the, the other thing was... Um, Hmm, what was I going to ask you? It was the, M- go- 
The yeah, NBA yeah, thing? they have, okay, yes. So here it is. So we were talking about the NBA and we were talking about, yeah. you know, um, here's a situation, big hot topic, of course, players resting. You never rest. I tweeted that out. A guy that never rests needs to comment on these big stars resting. And I don't see it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I think it's an excuse. They get eight days off in between playoff series. So don't tell me you got to rest so you'll be at a maximum for the postseason to win a championship. What's your take, Gary? I would rest. Linda, I'm the other way on this. Like, I'm not joking. And I'll tell you why. It's just about winning championships, right? Like, what are these guys, these com- these teams, these coaches being judged on? I mean, I, ju- like, I, I would tell you, and this may surprise you, I don't rest because in the world of business, it's 365 days and it's forever. It's not sports. If I'm when when if I'm owning a football team or, uh, listen, my booby prize would be the Knicks if I can't get the Jets. Like, <laughs> right. I, I I can wrap my head around this. I, I mean it. Now, now that being said, and we've all seen it, NFL teams rest their guys in week 15 and 16, then they have a bye, and then they're stunned why they got knocked out in the second round at home. Well, they're rusty. Four weeks hurt them. You have to have a real read on your guys. Some guys need continuity. Some guys are banged up. But one thing I would not care about is I don't really give a rat's ass if I'm the best team in the league, San Antonio, Golden State, uh, you know, whoever, and I'm coming to Toronto this week, I don't care that the fans aren't going to see Steph or, or, or Kyrie or whoever they want to see. Like, that means zero to me. The feelings of the casual NBA fan that wants to see the superstar that rolls in is literally the last thing I'd be worried about. I'm trying to win a championship, and whatever it takes, I would do that. Hack a shack, rest, cheat, as, as, you know, cheat in a way tank, that is not cheating. Tank, like you know, your like Jets that. will do yeah. in 2016, yes. 2017. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, like if, if I own the Knicks right now, everybody would be hurt. I want to get a couple more balls into that lottery. I don't know why everybody – listen, if you don't like it, like Will Chamberlain broke the sport, change the sport. Like if the NBA doesn't like it, if, they're, if Adam's concerned about it, and I think Adam is – By the way, I'm going to make a prediction here. Adam is going to go down as one of the great commissioners of all time. The way he thinks about branding on jerseys, the way he thinks about, you know, uh, daily fantasy, gambling, his progressive strategic mind is fascinating. I'm dying to see what he does over the next 20 years. Um, If he doesn't like it, if the owners don't like it, change it. Change, change rules. Make it a 54-game schedule. Make them, make them have more days in between. Yeah. Create penalties. Create penalties if you fake injuries or rest. Like, it's, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. change it. Don't yeah. cry about it. Right. It's, it's the coaches and players' for, uh, job to hack the system to win championships, period. I think the coaches are sending a message that they do want change, Gary. I mean, that's simply that. They don't like it. But owners, you know this. They're not going to cut back on games. They're going to lose money. They don't care. You can say all you want about, you know, um, oh, yeah, we feel bad for the players, blah, blah, blah. But they don't want to lose the dollars. But as it is now, right. the optics stink. And come on, I am surprised that you, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, I no, mean, I the knew, fans, knew, the fans Linda, suffer. The fans don't suffer. It's a meaningless game. Yes, there's a six-year-old who wanted to see Steph. He didn't. I get it. I'm empathetic. I am. I'm empathetic. I'm just not more empathetic than the task at hand is to win a championship. Like, like, listen, like, yeah. that's just real. Like, at all costs, it's to win a championship. My beloved 92 Rangers, and, you know, I talked to you about over sushi about this because yes. that's the team I love the most. That's the team I watch the most. I still, I hate, do you know how much I hate Pittsburgh. I hate the city of Pittsburgh with a level that is almost probably, I should probably go to jail how much I hate Pittsburgh. So wait a minute. As you much ha- as I hate Yeah. Go ahead. You haven't spoken so, there I mean, or anything because of your dislike of how the Penguins and Mario Lemieux upset our yes, Rangers yes, in 1992 right. when right. they were supposed to win the Stanley right. Cup? And I had to go to that shit city a couple, you know, a decade later to see the AFC Championship game <laughs> and I lost that one too. I'm very upset about this. Anyway, yes, that that 92 Rangers team, since I watched every game, they should have rested down the stretch. They should have rested. I really feel that. I feel like I could have another – I could have had my Stanley Cup earlier. I didn't need to cry that night. I mean, I still I – know, I know like Yarmir Yager is the greatest human being of all time, and you think he's the greatest human. I still don't really want to meet him.
he would like to meet you. I'm telling you, 45 and still going strong as Yarmer <laughs> Yager, Gary. He's amazing. He is He's a, amazing. He is amazing. But, you know, when you think about the future and what's ahead, and there's one sport yeah. that used yeah. to be America's pastime, and that would be Major League Baseball. And the listeners here yeah. on Mad Dog Unleashed, big followers of the MLB because of the host, Christopher Mad Dog Russo, who you are well aware yeah, of. of. Yeah, right, San Francisco Giants forever. Um, but that game, yeah. forget about it, has not aged well. How would you fix that? They need rule changes. That that's and listen, I, listen. Here's what baseball needs to do. And I'm very. This is a tough one. This is an. I think people lose on emotion. So what I'm about to say is going to hurt people's feelings. And I I respect where you're coming from, but baseball really has to realize that what's happening right now is their love for the stats of baseball, which I want to remind baseball have been ruined by the steroid era. Anyway, their love for those iconic numbers. Is, is forcing them to not adjust to the, the reality of the attention span and the interest. And let's not forget, it's still an incredible family pastime uh, during the summer. So attendance is in a great place. It's just that there isn't a nine-year-old. I mean, you, there's more nine-year-olds running around New York City with messy jerseys than with Yankee jerseys. True. It's scary. It's scary. And they need to recognize that. And they've got to adjust the sport and make some real tangible changes, whether it's innings, innings, times, at bats, like real rule changes, like real, like, whoa, that was very weird. I can't believe I lived through the time baseball went from nine innings to seven or three outs to two outs or stuff that would just make everybody throw up. And listen, I'm pretty hardcore romantic uh, guy as well about sports. I don't have the answer, but there needs to be some answer because – the the speed of our society is not mapping well to that sport. And I want to remind everybody who loves baseball, boxing and horse racing were the biggest sports along with baseball only 50, 60 years ago. You know, stuff changes. You can get caught when you don't think that your sport's going to be the one that's put up for, uh, for removal. I, I do think that they will stay the course because attendance is tremendous, because it is a phenomenal family outing in the summer where you need things to do. But I do think that the interest of uh, the sport is in trouble. And soccer is going to be here in 15 years. And everybody knows it. Latino population, uh, FIFA soccer, the game, MLS growth, World Cup, ESPN pushing it. Soccer is going to be here. I, I'd like I'd like baseball and hockey to make some changes to make sure they're there as well. Talking with Gary Vaynerchuk at Gary V at Vayner Media. Uh, you can see all his stuff on YouTube. You know, you mentioned some of the sports that could be hurting, but one of your favorites growing up, and you told me, um, it's just I don't have the emotional connection to it, but so many people, especially our listeners, do as well. Boxing. What should boxing yeah. do? I mean, uh, uh, my dad used to be obviously, but you know, because th- th- in the seventies, it was it was every Everything. And then before that, it was even more so. But now it's Floyd Mayweather, and we're talking about a Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather bout. I mean, boxing needs to expand on what they did with 24-7, and they need to do that on regular television. Storytelling. Vince McMahon taught everybody this. You know, when Mr. Perfect was about to enter the WWF, six weeks on Saturday morning, they would hype some guy, Mr. Perfect's coming, and by the time he came, you were enthralled by him. You know, my wife, Lizzie, listening to 24-7 in the background with me, finds out about Marquez's family. All of a sudden, she cares about the fight. It's just storytelling, Linda. That's what matters. That's what these celebrities on Instagram are doing. Boxing needs to be on mainstream television. It needs regular distribution. And it needs to tell you the stories of these kids who 87% come up with hardship. And they need to captivate people's attention. And then they need the serendipity of a Conor McGregor, of a Sugar Ray Leonard, of a Mike Tyson, uh, they need an iconic, you know, generational star to have the storytelling capture everybody's attention. And they need to educate people why people like me will love to watch a fight, even though there's no knockout or blood like UFC, because we love the technical aspects of defense and footwork. They need to educate people. Like the way I watch football, I'm going to watch football. I'm going to watch my offense. I'm going to buy, I watch Brian Winters, my guard. Uh, on his leverage technique, not like what, you know, and, and when you get to that nerdum and you care about the sport that much, 
well, then you've got something. And you'll never get a mainstream America to care that much, but you need to get hardcore sport fans, 1% to 2%, to care about the technique of boxing. And then you need to get stories and you need to pound them down people's throats. Stories sell. That's why I don't even see any more in the Olympics. All NBC does is tell you stories, so much so they went the other way. Um, stories sell. Yeah. And you know what? It's what you do when you take a stage and you speak to people. You connect with them, Gary. So, you know, you're busy taking others to the next level. Who does that for you? Who inspires you? Do you ever get up out of bed and you're like, oh, God, you know, what what is your secret? Who is that person? Is it family? What what is it for you? Yeah, for me, you know, for me, it's always been there. I don't know if I got lucky because I grew up with you know, not a whole lot, immigrant thing. My parents are very much my heroes. I'm pretty insular. I don't wake up saying, nah, like that just, like nobody cares about my feelings. I I wake up pumped (laughs) and excited and hungry. I've got a big mission here. Linda, I need to buy the New York Jets. Yes. Jet fans deserve a Super Bowl. How can I I help? exactly what to do. Oh, you do? Okay, good. All right. You know, and, and so... So I'm, I'm motivated, um, but I'm inspired by the emails I get every day. Now that I have millions of fans across all these platforms, I'll get the email from, you know, the single mom working three jobs. And I'm like, my God, she's got such a bad hand and she's hustling and she's fired up every, you know, I genuinely believe that 99.9% of the world has it worse than me. So I can't complain for anything. Um, so I'm just inspired by people, right? I'm listen. Our dinner the other night inspired me. Like, I was pumped when you were like, yeah, I just took, you know, random stuff on the island and this and then Seattle and then I just went to Calgary. Like, like hustlers inspire me, like people that work, people that are putting in the work. Right. Great message. And I enjoyed that. And that was great. And what, before I let you go, and I appreciate you taking a few minutes, what do you have uh, besides buying the Jets, which uh, we'll think of a hashtag and make that happen. What else are you working on? Where can we find you? What should we do for people who don't know who want more of you? Any single person listening right now, if I can help you, Gary V-E-E on Twitter and Instagram, DM me. I'll answer. Uh, thrilled to help. Um, you know, I'm good, Linda. I'll take care of mine. I just <laughs> want to keep putting out content, getting people to do their thing. And, uh, and and Linda, before I go, I mean, it's Isles Rangers tonight. I know. I'm be there. Again, I know you're, you're you not in New York. What's if you happen? were, all oh, the Rangers, it's going to be a tough game because they're coming off a, a back-to-back. And hockey players do play on back-to-backs. Yep. I know. Um, I know they do. But the Rangers will find what a way to think? win. What do you think? I think the Rangers will win. They're 10-3 okay. and three on the second of back-to-backs. Only I would know that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a beast. You're a beast. I know. I mean, I, I, I literally think you're the queen of hockey. Hockey should you should be the commissioner I of should. the NHL. I'm sorry, Gary. Like, like you single handedly can save the sport. I believe in that. I actually, as a matter of fact, as soon as I hang up right now, I'm going to start marinating in my head a strategy of how Linda Cohn is going to save this remarkable sport because you're the queen of hockey. podcast listeners. I really appreciate you giving me your ear. I respect it. I appreciate it. You want to one-star this shit? Cool. But if you want to five-star it, even better.